Hi everyone, welcome back to another video from Disciples of Alien. And in today's video we're going to take a look at what you can do here on Planet Arcadia when you want to go to a sweat circle. And more importantly, what you can also do when you don't find one. So let's start with the one if you do find one here. We go to Celeste Outpost. First and foremost, the main hub for sweating, and we find ourselves a jolly group of sweaters. All right, here we have them, and uh, let's just go ahead and join them, shall we? Now, as you might have noticed, um, when these guys come around, they're gonna hit you. And if you ever have been at a sweat circle here on Arcadia, you know that the Noosel Young actually deal pretty substantial damage. So you're not gonna last very long here unless you do have a healer and I'm gonna show you here exactly what I mean all right so here you are we will see me solo sweating a new so young uh, and as you can see he's dealing some substantial damage to me it's some hits around 16 15 well 10 13 something around that and if you got 90 health uh, and you didn't have healing you would already be dead if you look at the amount of damage I've been taking. And sometimes the news will tend to focus on you a lot. Um, so even if you find a sweat circle, be wary that you might need to have a lot of people in there or a healer in order to make it worth your while. And uh, that was what happened if you find a sweat circle. So, I'm thinking, let's rewind, go back in time and see what happens if you don't. Alright, so now we're back, and as you can see, I managed to find my uh, orange P-Tech tracksuit. Lovely. So let's go back to Celeste Outpost and see what happens some other times. We go up here, we go to the teleporter, and we click teleport. Now we can see that when we arrive here, we are gonna be surprised. Because sometimes this happens. You end up here, you want to go to a sweat circle, but there is absolutely nothing and no one in sight. So what do you do? You've got two options. You either go around here and you try to solo sweat one to the best of your abilities, right? That's option number one. Then you've got option number two, which is that you go ahead and you open the map, or the teleporter in this case, and then you just go to the green blobs up here, but you go to the tiny one up top to the left. This one is uh, the Corum Coast, which is owned by David Joker Potanus. I hope I pronounced that right now. Um, but when you go up here, you'll just teleport up and you'll get to this little area. Now, as you can see, it's kind of shock full of monsters right here, or mobs, as you say. Now, as we go here, we go ahead and face northeast and go up the slope here. And before you start doing this method, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fix the settings a little bit. Because the main thing you got to focus on is that when you are walking with a big creature behind you, you want to have a low setting on. Because if you have a high uh, setting on the object quality, you are going to get a lot of foliage. Alright? A lot of foliage. And we don't want that. Now, if I go ahead and set it to high, and I do like this, okay, well, that wasn't really shocking amounts of foliage. So I'll just go back and set it to low. Then we go ahead and make a cliff dive. Whee! Boom. All right. And the one creature we're going to be looking for is the mutated Hadrada. And... Uh, when we go around here, we'll have a look at these guys, because this one's level, level 14. It's got 119 stamina. Alright, so what that roughly translates into is that every one stamina is 10 health. So that's 1,190 health. And health and sweat have a correlation, alright? The correlation is that every 
health point is a sweat point, basically. So this one's got 1,190 sweat in it. Now if we look at the benefit of this, is that every time you go ahead and sweat one of these, you will know that you're going to get that exact amount of sweat. And on top of that, you might end up with something like this. So as you can see, there's a stack of 47 Bombardeau. And then we also find a stack of 87 Karut. Now, basically what that is, is that you found an extra stack of 100 sweat bottles in the Bombardeau. And you found 200 sweat bottles in the Karuts. I mean, that cuts down the sweating time quite a bit, if you think of it like that. Because you want to make every single penny count when it comes to uh, swanting. And if this is a more effective way to do it, then you could also do it in this form uh, with other friends as well. So, as you can see here, me and my buddy Axe here, we decided to just go ahead and take a mutated Hadrala Prowler and just start walking backwards. So, this is easy when you know how to do it. I mean, sometimes it's gonna get too close to you, so it's gonna hit you. So you wanna keep a 10 meter uh, radius from it, basically. But what I realized was that most people are used to the uh, classic way of just locking target and sweating because that's what we do in sweat circles so this is what happened when we got our third man to join us one thing we need to keep in mind is that when it comes to sweating we have a rather fixed mindset we are used to sweating in the classic sense that we have a creature in front of us and we lock the target like I do now and then they catch up to us so either we have a creature that we can out tank or that just doesn't hit as hard so basically when it came to the Kerberos they are good uh, when it comes to Sabakum hatchlings, Karabooks and Galards for instance they have low enough damage not to do anything. The issue with this kind of method is that you really need to pay attention. You gotta move a little bit when you see them targeting you. And especially when it comes to this, you gotta deselect the target. That is the difficult part to grasp. Because if you don't, then you're just gonna keep walking backwards. Now what you gotta do here is not do that, you don't want to switch to a hammer because then you're gonna abort the um, sweat extraction. So what you want to do is you just click here, you deselect, you hover the mouse over like this. Right? So as long as you keep the mouse cursor on the target, you will have a steady lock. Alright? That's a good tip for any planet that does not have a sweat circle. So if you're, for instance, on, let's say, planet Toulon, they've got the sun jocks that are slow enough to sweat in this manner. And uh, what else? I think that's the only ones there. Um, Anyway, to get back on track, uh, what we have here is basically that you need to know this method in order to be successful at this method of sweating. And you also need to pay attention when you're walking in a group like this, because the more people in a group, the more fruit potentially spawns. Now, what I mean by that is if you watch uh, or if you have watched Sir Sturge Tropius Master Fruit Walking video, he talks about the fact that fruit is not a fixed spawn thing. Uh, it's something that spawns around your character. So the more you walk, the more is the chance that it does actually spawn around you. You just gotta be alert. If you're a bunch of people doing this, 
it basically turns into a game of you snooze you lose uh, in many ways because you can avoid healing completely just by simply running away from it and if you are not paying attention then you could also lose target like I did there or you can just go ahead and miss the opportunities to pick up the stones or fruit that are on the ground all around you or your mates. Now if we're just gonna talk about why these guys would actually be better for groups wanting than for instance the Noozle Young there is actually a rather simple uh, explanation to that. See, since these guys spawn on Quorum Coast, they still retain the Quorum value basically. Uh, because if you as a hunter kill this one, and this one happened to global over 500 pet, then you get one Quorum Coast share. All right. Now, what that means is whenever there is a payout on the land the next month then you're gonna take part in that revenue alright so what that means is that instead of just killing noozles just because it's a nice thing to do then you can go ahead and you can kill off the Hadrada prowlers that you guys are gonna get more sweat from anyway and you're also gonna get more fruit and stone and more opportunities for fruit and stone which is actually the more key point because if we look at the classic celeste outpost sweat circle you're always going to have a healer pretty much always is a healer at celeste outpost now the downside is that the healer needs to remain active in order for you all to stay alive here it basically turns out to be a game of you snooze, you lose. Alright? So, not only in the sense that if you are not an active sweater, you don't get any benefit. And on top of that, if you're paying attention, you can also find fruit and stone as well. Which basically can double, triple or quadruple basically your value of this sweat circle so I mean if you if you were to take a pick if you can have a 338 HP mob which is the noozle and you're standing still obviously the pro is you can be kind of AFK the pro with this one is that you can find the most rare stones when you're doing this and if you do that that can basically be several peds on a stack so let's keep that in mind and i hope you guys have a good day anyhow here's the rest of the solo swant as i promised uh, sped up eight times but when it comes down to it if you are interested in the quorum share system that was talked about i'm gonna drop a link to his video david's video down here below and I suggest that you take a closer look at it, because it might be something for you if you're already swanting, or if you're already killing stuff at sweat circles, or just killing things in general, really. So I hope you guys have a good day, and uh, you lot take care, and I hope to see you soon. See ya!